section. Today we have our guest Rima Pipoyan. Uh, she's quite a while in Belgium, actually. She's traveling a lot. Uh, she's an artist, dancer, choreographer, ballet. And uh, lately you can find her videos and dance videos, which are award awarded in a couple of countries. Uh, and she was uh, quite a bit long in Belgium, but we weren't able to meet because I was busy and she has a busy schedule too but mostly it's my mm, fault. So she uh, she's here now uh, at Zoom. I'm glad that I'm uh, interviewing with a contemporary Armenian dancer, since that I have a little bit background of that, that I worked and my best friends were in Turkey, were Armenian contemporary dancers. I'm really interested to talk with her. Rima Pariegar, hello. Hello. <laughs> so hello. Uh, Rima, I wanted to introduce you first as everybody, I, I, I made a little Googling, uh, but the thing is, I, I first let, let, me, uh, let me tell that you're, uh, let me read what Google says on what Wikipedia says, then let's talk about it. Rima, Pipa, uh, Rima Pipoyan uh, is an Armenian choreographer, director, dancer, and dance teacher. She is considered to be one of the pioneers of modern ballet and contemporary dance in Armenia. We will talk about it. In 2017, she has found Choreography Development Educational and Cultural Foundation aiming to support the development of contemporary dance and modern ballet in Armenia. Pipoyan has presented her choreography works in uh, Italy, Spain, Serbia, Croatia, Russia, Belarus, Germany, Poland, Moldova, Georgia, Belgium, Portugal, and etc., etc., uh, of course, in Armenia. And maybe uh, people who watch TV in uh, Armenia, you will be very familiar with her choreographies from uh, some uh, some shows in Shant TV and the others. Uh, but 2010, 2013, she was uh, doing some choreographies, but uh, lately uh, you can also watch her uh, dance movies and uh, her choreographies. And uh, Rima, I want to stop in here because if I continue, just the Google uh, has a couple of pages or <laughs> up on you. And uh, yeah, when I see Arham Khan and when I see some really mm, interesting contemporary dance uh, models in the world, in your, uh, in your CV, in here, in your story, I was very, uh, I don't know, uh, very tangent. Okay, what's happening? What do you do? What, what did you do in, uh, in uh, Belgium? You came uh, to Villempan as an, I think, is an exchange. Uh, how did it start it since when you were in Belgium? What are you doing? And uh, please tell us. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm really glad about this uh, meeting, uh, Zoom meeting actually. It will be great that we can chat, that we can speak uh, in real life. <laughs> of course. But um, I mean, nowadays it's really, really actual to do these things. Uh, yeah, I'm here like it's already 35 days and I'm leaving after two hours. <laughs> so uh, I'm leaving for Armenia. Uh, it was really great here actually after this old pandemic, uh, you know, time, two years. I was in Armenia only. So this is my first time I'm um, out of the country, uh, out of Armenia. Uh, I am doing here a residency actually, and I am as a choreographer and dancer here in Villa Uh It was, um, I mean, it is a collaboration between Creative Armenia and uh, Borussia Foundation. Mm -hmm. So um, they chose me as to be as one of the residents um, in 2020. But as you know, the, it was really hard time uh, in that year. So. I'm here now in 2020, so we missed one year. Um, also, I'm here, I'm doing a touring uh, between countries Belgium and Germany with collaboration of uh, the Belgium-based company Ireneka. Uh, maybe you have heard about it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it is like my, it's already my fourth or I don't remember uh, how many times we did this collaboration, uh, but this is really great. We are doing also site specific dance and uh, also there is a festival. Um, I was uh, here in Belgium three or four years ago, if I'm not mistaken. 
so yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, the the days were really full here, uh, and I managed to do a lot of things. Not uh, connected to dance as well, uh, but not only. <laughs> I managed to visit a lot of uh, cities here in Belgium, and I was amazed by the museums, by the views of the, some cities, uh, for example, Namur, Dinan. Um, I was also uh, two years ago in Bruges, in Ghent. Uh, I visited Antwerp, so it was really, really cool. And I managed also to, to visit uh, here a documentation center, which holds um, a concert mm-hmm. and I met uh, there the director of this uh, center, and she allowed me to enter to this archive and to learn about dance, uh, what they are doing. So it was it was really nice because they are actually not open. Uh, so knowing me, them just here a resident artist, they allowed me to enter to this archive and. Uh, also buy some book, books. Uh, yeah, um, actually, uh, mainly I work in Armenia, but I travel lo- a lot. Um, I'm based in Armenia, so there are there are some people um, who want me to perform here frequently. But the thing is that I'm not too far, but this is really difficult to reach. Oh, not only Belgium, but all Schengen uh, area countries. So I need visa. Uh, the flight is really expensive uh, most of the time. So the problem is uh, mostly in that. Uh, so they sometimes want me to be here and stay here for a long time. I am thinking about this, but in some way it is impossible because i have a lot of things to do in armenia uh so i work at some several places in armenia Mm -hmm. uh everything connected uh, related to dance so we'll see yeah a lot of things to (laughs) i don't know from where either either two ways so for uh, I don't know. We we should we should also talk about your your teaching in Armenia. And uh, as I said, you created a foundation which gives a lot of uh, a lot of not pressure, but lo- a lot of things to do in there. But let me let me ask like this: when <clears throat> uh, in in Istanbul, we, my my friend uh, uh, my good friend Miran Miran Tomasian was a contemporary dancer. So be, because of him, I was uh, related and. Uh, at least met with contemporary dance. But in Armenia, when people, even in Turkey or in Europe, it, uh, in Europe, it has a history. Uh, there, there is, a, there, it has a history with all, every country, uh, there is almost in every country, there are companies in Belgium, in Netherlands, they have good companies also, uh, dance companies, contemporary yeah. dance companies in uh, England. Uh, but when we are talking about Armenia, it's always coming first uh, to mind uh, when they say dance, it's traditional dance. But actually, yeah. Armenia is not just that. Uh, Armenia is w- maybe you, you, you have background in maybe about as a ballet, but contemporary dance is uh, something really innovative and improved and we see it with you uh, and uh, thanks to you we, with your videos uh, in 2020 yell and now you have another one which is traveling no uh, which is also going at, i sold me my non self and i uh, so uh, this is collaboration thing with ukraine uh, actually mm-hmm. I, I will tell you afterwards yes okay so just tell us uh, what is the situation about contemporary? But first of all, let's explain. Maybe many of our uh, viewers doesn't know what is contemporary dance in Armenia. What is the situation in Armenia? Uh, let me say like this. Um, actually, we have some choreographers and dancers uh, in Armenia who are really interested in modern dance and contemporary dance. And you know, you want or you don't. Um, uh, you, when you choreograph uh, in these days, nowadays, uh, you use some movements which are 
modern, which are contemporary. Mm -hmm. So you can, I mean, you may do the choreography, which uh, has some uh, ballet movement, or I don't know, some folk mu movement. But uh, when you want to um, express yourself, you mainly do some new movements, with some new movements, which are already modern or contemporary. The thing is that we don't have any professional school, but uh, but uh, at the moment, at the choreographic college in Yerevan, uh, which is only one. So in 2020, we have opened the department of modern dance, and at the moment, I am the head of this um, department, and uh, and the the main idea is uh, to have. Uh, a professional modern school um, and I did this program uh, looking up all the um, uh, you know the schools or the um, uh, universities how they did do the program in Europe so I made this program for for students uh, in Armenia so the education is like three years long, and after graduated it, you will, you will have a diploma as a modern dancer. So we started it last year in 2020. So I think um, the interest in modern dance is growing every day there. And this year uh, in August, they were um, in Armenia, first time, a contemporary dance festival, which was organized by the uh, Russian-based uh, contemporary dance um, artist, uh, Valeria Kasparova. So they have in St. Petersburg Open Look Dance Festival, which is already 20 years they are uh, running this festival. Um, and they decided to have the festival, Modern Dance Festival also, uh, in Armenia. Uh, this was collaboration also some of the companies in Armenia as well. I was out of the country so I couldn't uh, manage to participate by myself but my film, my movie was uh, participating. I think it was really good start and I hope the interest will uh, rise uh, on dance within uh, our country. Uh, and about the school and teaching, um, yes, I think this is the one uh, professional um, a school of modern, not school, but uh, teaching program, may I say like this, in whole South Caucasus area that we have um, uh, now in Armenia at Choreography College. Um, so yes, yeah, this year we made uh, the second um, entrance exam and there were a lot of people who were interested in, but not men, I don't know. I mean, female are more interested than male dancers <laughs> in contemporary dance. Probably in the future we will have uh, this, uh, okay. you know. <laughs> I, I know the history in Istanbul that we ha uh, they had the same in the conservatory even when they opened it. It was uh, always women are, are first interested, maybe a bit open-minded or uh, they're open-minded more than men. And I don't know, maybe. Uh, but I don't know, maybe more flexible in, uh, in Armenia. Yeah. yeah, it is a bit difficult uh, subject. <laughs> <laughs> were, 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 uh, were, uh, were they uh, resistant uh, for when you were opening the choreography, a contemporary dance part? Because it, because it's not traditional, something new you are doing it for everyone. Uh, actually, it is not so new because, as you mentioned, it was a TV show program, so you think you can dance uh, Armenian version of uh, American TV, TV show TV. program in the USA. It is really famous there. So it was about ten years ago, and uh, people. Um, got acquainted with this um, uh, modern, may I say, like contemporary dance 10 years ago, because uh, I remember on the street uh, before the um, broadcasting, after, I mean, broadcasting, they were approaching me and saying, 
oh my god this was so beautiful i didn't know the, that uh, this uh, kind of uh, dance style is exists etc etc uh, so i think people more or less um, are acquainted with this that so this is not so new but the thing the problem is we don't have uh, a modern dance performance mm-hmm. in our professional stage on our professional stage i mean uh i'm talking about our opera and ballet house at saint Darian in Armenia. Yeah. so we have a classical ballet repertoire but we don't have some modern dance uh right. so Yeah. Why? Um actually I'm I don't want to say they are conservative but probably I must say this because um if the, if they want they may have some really good repertoire uh, from famous choreographers and this is really because people are interested in you know in Sparta they are going Gaiane like our mm-hmm. national uh, ballet also classical ballet like Giselle uh, what we have Don Quixote um, we have some some repertoire but mainly these are uh, you know academic classical ballet uh, so maybe if we have this uh, modern um, ballet repertoire it will be Uh, I mean, more people will be involved, uh, you know, interested in this mm-hmm. um, art, uh, dance art. I don't know, um, but we, we, I am thinking on this also. To I don't know if I, if I okay. uh, can uh, change something. Okay, is it possible that there are not enough uh, choreographies that presented, or they don't know yet that much uh, to present to state opera? Um, I think the problem is they uh, the government should input a little money on this to to invite uh, choreographers from abroad to uh, to stage uh, choreographies, modern choreographies in our um, state opera. Also, um, I had uh, several times uh, some projects uh, which uh, I presented um, to. Uh, to realize on the stage but i don't know this is a bit a problem um concerning the uh, theater also financial um, things uh, so yeah there are some it is a complicated situation a little bit but i don't know hopefully the in the future we will solve this <laughs> i don't know if okay. we can Let me go through uh, about let, let's get out a bit uh, from bureaucracy uh, that uh, but the the thing wh- when I see your videos where when I watched your videos that I found on uh, YouTube and uh, some other festivals that you attended they have uh, some of your works in there it is um, it's uh, there, I, I I see and I felt that there is there is always a story background when uh, we are watching by the way when we i think we should mention that when we are talking about contemporary dance or modern dance we we are not say uh, we are we don't have to mix this uh with the uh, uh music clip dancing thing this this is not the same thing when you are watching a contemporary yeah. dance it's it's totally different they can go check out and they i will include in this video too yeah. uh, some of your teasers that it's completely different where the movements are different it's it's something else the other one maybe we can say it's a bit commercial uh the, yeah. the, what's happening on tv but uh the thing is i always sense that that there is a story where about this movements i saw your yell but i saw some other uh, dancers uh so i checked out then uh, about in your list uh, i found that there are always some armenian traces like you the music or so, somehow i don't know uh, there is alanovanes or arna babajanian or gomidas or levom uh, minasian's music uh, coming out in, yeah. in these videos so uh, what 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 do you uh, do you think when the uh, the The first time that the net in uh, Tanz International that it was in Austria that they were uh, some Armenian 
contemporary dancers from Istanbul presenting, the Europeans were saying that, guys, you have a story in here. That's why it's interesting. We all we are always in Europe. We are always concerned about uh, the the, uh, the the physics, the how it looks like, the the body positioning, uh, and I don't know many things. So, uh, do you get the same uh, feeling when you get in touch with the uh, with the um, other contemporary dancers, not from South Caucasus, let's say? Uh, let me say like this. Um, actually. Um, everything, I mean, the background of dance is uh, you want or no, there is some story. But as to me, it is really important the narrative of the, of the dance. So what I wanted to tell to people. So the first time, uh, narrative, music, and then uh, movement. So uh, movement, this is like a medium uh, to express myself. Um, my thoughts um, to transfer my thoughts to to people. So it depends how I um, it depends on narrative. Mm -hmm. So most of the time in Europe they are coming from movement. So they create first movement, then all uh, the rest. You know the story, the music comes, and sometimes you see the performance and you feel. Um, a little bit of, uh, frustrated because you don't understand uh, why uh, this movement uh, from where they are coming. Um, the thing is, they allow this, they accept this way of, um, uh, you know, uh, to express themselves. So first is movement. The important is are, are, are movement. Um, so I accept this as well. Uh, but in my case, uh, the narrative, uh, the subject comes first. So first of all, when you see my um, performances, you want to uh, think what, what, what it is about. So uh, the thing is, when I dance here in Europe, they really appreciate, uh, especially the way how I move. And they repeat this all the time. And they are saying this is not usual thing. You can see this uh, often, often in uh, um, Europe, because I have. They think this is some folk or traditional dance in in my uh, movement, uh, but this is not the thing. Uh, I have the uh, ballet background, uh, classical ballet background, um, and uh, after uh, when I started to choreograph. Uh, I also train, I don't know, you know, this martial arts, uh, Wushu, Chinese martial arts, Wushu, yes. So you, you can see, you can notice some, uh, you know, movements or gestures coming from this martial arts. Um, and also um, the way I feel the movement, the way I feel the narrative or at the moment, uh, what is uh, music dictates. So um, mainly this thing, but when I usually choreograph to, and I work with other people, I don't, um, mm, I don't touch, you know, these martial arts and movements. No, I use a lot of hands. I lose a lot of, I use a lot of hair in my choreography. So this is probably a little, I don't know, exotic for, for the European country. Is but it coming from our traditional is, dances that we always use our hands in the wind? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. I use it a bit differently. So when in Armenia you will see that being Armenian, you will never say that this is Armenian thing. Never. Because uh, when you say me now dance Armenian, it would look like not Armenian. <laughs> Actually, I move in my way. I don't know, but this is uh, definitely not Armenian thing. But here, they're not familiar to Armenian dances, so they think that I dance something Armenian. I don't know. But for, for them, it's really exotic, and um, they always say that um, I have a really strong presence on stage. Like when I stand, I look really tall and big. But um, uh, my, I mean, uh, high is one meter fifty centimeters. <laughs> I'm really sure. But uh, on the stage, I look uh, really, really tall. 
So they say, I, 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 this is not my opinion. So, um, yeah, uh, and I really do. No, but you also yeah. use, uh, I, saw, uh, I saw that you also in your full length uh, first choreography and the second, you also use Armenian. Uh, the second one is uh, you were using Sharagans, uh, no? Uh, yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love Sharag. I love our spiritual music and songs. Uh, I really appreciate it. I appreciate some uh, our really uh, famous um, composers like Baba Janyan, Khachaturian. I really love um, Komitas. And I did a lot of, um, already, I have a lot of performances on this music. Um, so I find, you know, um, the thing is that I can do, this music is allow me to do my movement, to create, so this is so flexible and perfect in, in its way. So. I can express um, my uh, movement uh, with this music. These are not Armenian gestures or uh, movements, mm -hmm. but this music allows me uh, to, to uh, you know, perform um, everywhere I want. I can explain it, but this is really flexible music and back music. So back, you know, he was like 17th century at that time, but now a lot of modern contemporary companies uh, can use the music of Bach and do the contemporary dances. So the, the thing, the same thing in, uh, uh, is our, our spiritual music, our songs, charlatans, etc. Komitas also arrangement of many, many uh, songs. So yeah. Okay, um, let me let me conclude with this. When are we going to be able to watch uh, you on stage? Because it seems that it's so hard to perform in uh, Europe uh, for now. There are lots of complications, but there are yeah, lots of dance. Uh, yeah, there are there are there are there are there are, there are lots of uh, dance festivals too. Uh, probably you're going. Yeah. Is it soon or what is your plan? Um. I actually the last my last performance was, was yesterday in Germany. It was also like collaboration with Belgian um, based company. Um, it was woman before decision making, and this this is a solo piece um, which I made two years um, ago. And this solo piece has a lot of a lot of awards from from around the world. Um, and this is probably fifty or more cities that I, in Europe, I dance this, uh, I perform this um, choreography. So this is uh, kind of, <laughs> yeah, exciting. The next thing I um, have um, contract in Germany in November. So I'm going to dance uh, my performance, which is called Hey Kitty. This I met in, in Berlin in 2000 and um, 18, when I was resident artist in Berlin, Academy of Kunst, Academy of Art. Um, so they invited me from Germany to, to perform this. And it, it will be in November this year. Okay, which city? Uh, actually, I don't remember, but for sure it's not Berlin and Munich. <laughs> but I, I should check because there are a lot of things in my mind I can't remember the. <laughs> okay, so we, they will keep in touch if they want to travel to Germany uh, to watch you soon. Uh, they can, but also yeah. they can maybe they, they can watch your uh, videos too in the festivals. Maybe I don't know uh, because you, your videos are going to perform in a couple of festivals. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I mean you you mentioned about me, my own self, and I. Yeah. This is a collaboration with uh, Ukraine and Armenia. Uh, this was a dance project in 2020, this May, um, in, in May. Uh, no, not 20, 21, sorry. Um, so we made it like also an um, online uh, version of this dance. So uh, people, if they are really attentive, they can get familiar, uh, I don't know, uh, like, um, 
following my Facebook page or Instagram page. Uh, so maybe there are some also um, online performances. Uh, we made also this this uh, performance in Serbia. Uh, um, I don't remember in which country, but yeah, probably in the future it's gonna be like online again. Uh, this exactly this performance. Okay. Also, they yeah. can uh, watch the film uh, Yell, uh, which is also ongoing project. Uh, but mainly in YouTube, on YouTube they uh, can watch the short version of my performances, like trailers or teasers. Uh, yeah. these things. Sure, it's it's better always to go to watch on uh, on scene, on theater. Yeah. And, uh, how yeah, is it going? Yeah, by, yeah. How is it going, by the way, when it's not uh, per, when it's not uh, you're not on stage? Uh, what is the, it's online? It's going to be different uh, to be performing online. Uh, there, I, I saw that a couple of companies uh, in Europe they tried during this pandemic uh, online performances. Uh, actually, even for viewers, it's you know it's not that much something, but you think that you're watching it like a movie. But uh, this is something yeah. two way. Uh, you need the we uh, you need the audience, and audience needs the energy of the uh, content. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So you the the first thing you lo lose this is energy for sure. Uh, the thing is that my feeling is like. When I did this Yell movie uh, and I did this online version of this my, Me, My, Non, Self, and I, it was like I, I lost a lot of energy and I couldn't get back any, uh, anything. So I was like, please give me a stage with audience. <laughs> and <laughs> the difference is uh, like you are after when is there only a camera uh, like taking the film or, or, uh, or with you. This is like you give energy and you can't get something back. So you are after the this, you feel really exhausted and tired and like you don't want to speak with anyone anymore. <laughs> but what I did this year, two times, three times performances in Belgium, and there were um, there was audience, etc. So I was really, really cheered and a little with a lot of energy, despite I was really tired. But when I give energy, I, I uh, like with, if there are hundred people, or I don't know, 10 or less or more, uh, doesn't matter, I get this really energy back. And um, yeah, I feel that this is the thing, the difference. So when I was watching, um other choreographies online you know this is the thing that um i don't look at them as a um as a ordinary i don't know uh, or or the audience just for knowing this 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 choreography okay i'm familiar with that next this next this but i'm wondering how real people feel when the difference between real, um, you know, performance when they are sitting in a <clears throat> room and when they are uh, in front of their, I don't know, laptops or computer, <laughs> yeah. uh, TV. So this is the thing that I'm just looking at um, as a professional. Uh, so I can judge, uh -huh, this, this one was good, this one was not, etc. The energy is missing in every uh, aspect, so this is not the uh, thing. Okay, to... so I, I will not keep you more. Probably you should pack, or you already packed uh, <laughs> for the week. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the, it was good to have you, to talk with you. I'm pretty sure, by the way, we I should have mentioned before uh, in this video, but uh, we talked in English because we wanted to reach more people. Uh, it's We are talking about contemporary dance and Belgium. I'm pretty sure many Belgians and uh, Europeans are going to be interested. Otherwise, uh, Rima uh, perfectly speaks Armenian, of course. <laughs> 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 Much better. 
<laughs> much better. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you, Rima, for this interview. Uh, have a good trip back. Thank I you. hope we will uh, we will see you soon in Europe or even maybe in Armenia. And for our viewers, uh, I'm uh, attaching all the videos and social media accounts of Rima Pipoyan. You can follow her. Uh, you can watch her online movies and uh, keep in touch. Uh, thank you, Rima. Thank you, too. It was really nice to meet you and have a talk with you. So, yeah, it's hard to time, see you. Next, with, time we will, we will, yeah. next time, let's have a coffee. <laughs> really. Okay. <laughs> <With> pleasure. <laughs> see you. Okay. Bye-bye.